Okay, it's time for our first hot topic. And um, Mele Kiara, the Group Managing Director of the Nigeria National Petroleum Company, the NNPCL, says Nigeria will be a net exporter in 2024. Today, we export, I'm quoting him now, 100% of our productions. No resource-dependent country does this, and that is why we must deliver on our mandate. I don't want to speak about it. When it is done, you will see it. He also goes on to say that, so I don't want to tell you we are going to revamp our refineries. That is too much of PowerPoint talk. So it will be done, and you will see it. I don't want to speak about it. We are tired of speaking about it. But what we must achieve is that this country, this country must be a net exporter of petroleum product, and this is within sight. Is this within sight, or is this just another political statement? I have been joined by Dr. Ambrose Iboke, Chairman, Guild of Public Affairs Analyst, Enugu State Chapter. Good morning to you, Dr. Iboke. Good morning, and uh, thanks for being here. So is this within sight, Nigeria being uh, you know, a net exporter of petroleum products, or do you think this is just another make-them-feel-good statement? Yeah, I agree. I think I agree with your last talk. Make sure that it is a make them feel statement. And uh, we have been talking about being next exporter of uh, petroleum products since our refinery stopped working for almost um, uh, 35 years ago, uh, in the 90s, when our refinery stopped working. Nigeria has always had always been a net exporter of crude uh, uh, in the 60s, 70s, especially in the 70s and 80s, where our refineries were firing in all cylinders. Uh, we had the Portacourt, we have the Warri refinery, we had even the Kaduna refinery where uh, the oil uh, and petroleum products that was servicing uh, the whole of the northern region was being moved to. And then we had uh, all these depots and all these uh, tank farms all over the country. So um, trucks don't need to you know, travel. But the consequences of Nigeria not refining its oil locally is so massive that uh, the damage it has done to our economy and to our people is so massive. For example, all the allied products that come with refinery, like petrochemical, remember that there was a petrochemical plant in LMA, uh, in Potaco, uh, and there was petrochemical plant in Wari. So what happened? So now we import fertilizers because we don't refine our own crude oil, where the grease, uh, uh, plastic, a lot of you know, byproducts that come from refining our petroleum products, we have lost that, we lost the industry, uh, closed industries, you know, lost jobs, and then, you know, make us import all these uh, ancillary services uh, products that come from, uh, uh, you know, refining of petroleum. Also, we have, because of that, our roads have been damaged because we now have a situation where tankers, oil tankers, have to travel all the way from the Duke from Enugu, uh, traveling from Harcourt, traveling from Kaduna, and all the central of the country, all heading to Lagos. Mm. you know, to lift petroleum products. I, this is a shame of the nation. I, I don't know how we degenerated to this uh, uh, level. Uh, because before, you know, tankers from all over the north just need to go to Kaduna. Uh, in, 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 in the west, I mean, we have depots in the uh, serious depots in Mosimi, in, near Ibadan. We had the, uh, the Oreo, where people from Benin and uh, the west can usually go and pick. And then Benin also can go to Wari. Uh, and then but the southern easterners can usually go to Port Harcourt and Wari. And so all those have been destroyed. Our roads are not, our roads no longer last long because of tankers, accidents that have come up because of tankers everywhere. And so it is um, uh, been an economic burden on Nigeria. We are, uh, as a nation, we are the only OPEC exporting nation that exports crude oil and produces crude oil, take it outside the country you know, refines it and bring back refined product. We pay forex for that and then bring it back. So, and that is why we are suffering the economic uh, 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 hardship we have now because no country does that and survives. Uh, and Nigeria has must be a you know a research uh, specimen because I don't think many countries will try this even and have and survive the long we have survived in terms of uh, not falling into economic jaw drops. So, uh, for uh, for Meli uh, Mel Kreari, um for me, it is talk shop. You should not have even said it at all. For example, where are the modular refineries? Uh, the PIE, Petroleum Industrial Act, uh, Act. where is it? I mean, why have 
modular refineries not started functioning in Nigeria, the all the billions of naira that was used to, to you know set up uh, the old time around maintenance for our refineries, where do they all go to? Why is NNPC still even existing? NNPC has failed Nigeria. When you compare NNPC with all these uh, contractors, like NNPC is uh, the equivalent of uh, Gazprom in Russia, it's a state owned uh, oil company. Uh, NNPC is the equivalent of Petrobras in Brazil, it is the national uh, oil company in Brazil. Uh, NNPC is also a, a, a contemporary of uh, uh, Saudi Aramco, which is also a state owned oil company. These companies are doing so well. They are the equivalent of our own NNPC. They are doing so well, are raking in trillions of dollars for their countries over the years. But here we are um, having an NNPC that does not even contribute anything to the national uh, uh, budget for some years now. Yet, they uh, swallow a lot of our budgets. So, uh, uh, for economy, we are not a serious country, uh, actually meaning to tackle our economic issues. And that is where we are as a people right now. So, make sure to keep his postulations to himself until we are able to see serious actions and we are able to see consequences. But one of the um, speeches, one of the aspects of his speeches that I find worrying is that uh, he said that even if we start, you know, uh, re refining oil in Nigeria, that the costs will not come down, that it's about international cost. And I keep asking myself, why do those people talk this way? Hmm. I'm a simple elementary uh, economics. So you are telling us that the price of oil is uh, petrol is high and petroleum products is high because you are buying from international market when you buy from refined products and international market. Mm -hmm. Then you are telling us that when you start to refine locally, that the cost will still be at uh, international market. I think uh, Nigerian citizens should start uh, demanding some actions from these people because I think they don't take all of us with a bunch of monkeys. Otherwise, you will not be saying those kind of statements that when you buy internationally, it's still the same price. When you now refine locally, it's still the same price. Something uh, I think in your they are taking us for a right. So why 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 would you say uh, he? I mean, you are not the only one that's asking why NNPC. In fact, you are probably more than asking why the NNPC is still in existence. More people have asked why is Melikere still in office? Why, why do you think he's still in office? Perhaps government is pleased with him. Perhaps he is. Um, you know. Um, doing what he's supposed to do in the eyes of his employers well melanie Kral is not the problem the problem is nnpc so well, whoever you make the, the the managing director of nnpc will still fall into the trouble nnpc is a huge uh, you know conduit pipe nnpc is a huge um crater or will i say it's like a a, a gap uh, that is like a you know earthquake or tsunami uh, that created NNPC has been a behemoth of uh, wastage over the years. So wherever you put that, uh, we always be swallowed up by that cesspool of uh, corruption and uh, inefficiency that has characterized NNPC over the years. Uh, a, 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 a parastatal of government that you know so much money is pumped into it, and for some years now has not contributed even one cobble. To the national, uh, to the national income, uh, then it, it, there's something wrong with that. And so uh, when you put it like it, that, it, 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 when you put it, it like, problem. yeah, when you put it like that, it then appears like a very hopeless situation. Is Nigeria ever going to come out of this pit? For now, we are still uh, having talk shops. For now, we are not still serious. Uh, for now, Mayor Kayale is uh, still speaking in. Uh, in uh, workshops and conferences, uh, instead of us to make serious demands, we are still um, rolling the red carpet to talk on PowerPoint. He, what he's saying is PowerPoint, so I don't know why he's saying that it's not about PowerPoints. What he's saying is PowerPoint presentation. All this oral presentation we have had in so many years, you know, now Nigerians are tired of hearing this kind of things. So when he says action, well, let's wait for the action. When the action comes and Nigeria starts in the action, then he can talk. But any other talk he's saying without us seeing action, it's PowerPoint uh, presentation, and that's what he has done again. Uh, the refineries have not started working. None is working. The modular refineries have simply refused to kick up. And when you ask uh, the, uh, the people, who, uh, people who have the license, we tell you that uh, the environment is not right, that it's on the policies that are not right for them to invest their money. And these people are businessmen, so you won't blame them. So uh, if the environment is not right for them, let them now, let government approach them and ask them why. 
and let Kobek clear all the uh, hindrances they are having so that we can have modular refineries. Because it's only modular refineries that can actually help uh, the case of Nigeria. Uh, even if uh, the Dangote refinery is working in Betuleki, Lagos, somebody still needs to travel from, uh, you know, the north to come and pick it, unless they have a, a mechanism for uh, pumping fuel into all the uh, moribund uh, tank farms, like in Mosimin, like in uh, Onre, and in some other parts of the country where we have uh, and this tank fund that NNPC was uh, were, were, was using. So if that does not happen, we still have the same issues, jamming up the, uh, the whole place, bringing a lot of vehicular movement into uh, into Lagos, and having uh, the trucks stay uh, two weeks, three weeks to lift petroleum products. It's still the same kind of, uh, you know, uh, bedlam that we're going to have uh, if that's open. And then why will in a country like Nigeria, with over the you know, population of 200 million uh, uh, people, and start having one single refinery to service the nation. It's a, it's a shame, actually. It's a big shame. Well, they said that um, next year, all the government uh, refineries will be working, specifically this year in December, that the Port Harcourt refinery will be working. This is not the first time we are hearing those kind of uh, stories. They are sounding like this by moonlight, or like folk clothes, where folk tales, where you gather under the tree in the village. Uh, under the moonlight to say, uh, we are not, uh, we are not yet uh, believing. We won't believe until it happens. Um, the statements of government, uh, successive governments over the years, based on this refineries working, uh, is not believable until it happens. Yeah, he himself also said that uh, <laughs> I don't want to speak about it. We are tired of speaking about it. So he, he himself knows that Nigerians are tired of the Jojo. We want to see action. He says... So why did he speak about it? Exactly. Why did he speak he about it? quiet until it starts working. I, I, he didn't need to speak about it. Because the, the, what he said yesterday has been confined to the, uh, to the dustbin of history of speeches made about our refineries working. Even this year, we have been told it to work in June. And then they keep shifting the date from July. They keep shifting the date. So he should stop talking. Let us see the actions. So, we are tired of hearing them talk. One of the things he also said yesterday is that uh, fuel subsidy is not yet back. Even though over the weekend, the president of Pengasin did say that fuel subsidy is back and that government should come out clean on this matter. He said government is just, um, you know, recovering its costs, but the subsidy is not back. What's the difference? Well, the, the truth is that uh, it, it, I, I have had a lot of interventions since May 29th, uh, 2023, when the, go, uh, when the president mentioned that uh, the fair subsidy is gone in his inaugural speech. And I've said, you don't do things like this. You don't do things with knee-jerk approaches. You, you, you don't do things without planning. And that has been the problem of Nigeria. No short-term plan, no mid-term plan, no long-term plan. We just, you know, we create documents, vision 2025, vision this, vision that. We don't even have economic path, a recovery path. Now, if the president is one, he just says subsidy is gone. Within 24 hours, fuel products uh, started, you know, uh, uh, astronomical increase. The two months into that, we had another astronomical increase. So we're paying 165 uh, uh, naira to a, uh, to a uh, liter of petrol. Uh, in, three, in two months, we started paying 600 naira. What, how do you explain that kind of economics, for God's sake? Almost 600% increase in, 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 in prices, while other uh, indices of economy remain static. Salaries were not increased, nothing happened. So, then, it also shows that it was not sustainable over the year because there were no plan to, mm -hmm. you know, there were no alternative plans while we are moving subsidy. What were the alternative plans? None. The government started running around after it has already removed the subsidy to start asking for loan to give what they call a palliative uh, 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 two million uh, two million homes, all those kind of things. They look like things that uh, you know uh, students of uh, economic class in the university are using for their practicals. These are not things a nation should be doing. And so it's a shame that uh, we didn't plan an alternative or removal of uh, first subsidy. We just said uh, the only way to remove first subsidy is to make sure that uh, the first subsidy is a function of that we are not refining locally. Mm -hmm. So simple economics. We are subsidizing what you are importing, refined products you are importing. Make the petroleum products refinable in your country. And once you do that, you don't need even subsidy. Subsidy will go away. So instead of doing that, 
They hurriedly went to remove subsidies so that they can get some money that uh, that they were spending the subsidy. And maybe they have gotten it for I mean for five, five months now, six months. They have been able to recoup some money and then they're introducing it back. But Nigerians must hold it to the government accountable. If you have reintroduced the subsidy with, with the, whichever name you have given it, whether it's recovery or no recovery or whatever you have or given, intervention. So far, there's a payment, <laughs> there's a payment you are making to cushion the, the price of fuel. That the price of petroleum must, products must come down. It must come down. Mm -hmm. Because if it is being subsidized, we should not be buying fuel at 600. We should be buying it at a lower cost. So who is gaining from this new subsidy? This is the question Nigeria should, uh, should ask. And the media should start asking these questions and thinking deep. I mean, Nigerian media is failing, uh, they are failing us seriously. I mean, part of that, that constituency. But we, we are failing the citizens of this country. But we are no asking the questions. If you look across the channels, different stations across the country, all the channels, you have people asking government officials and public analysts such as yourselves, digging deep and asking questions. What more can we do? But that's not what I mean. What I not mean is that what you call investigative journalism. For example, who is, we don't need to access from them they will give us the colorated answer to suit their, their, their actions. So what happened to investigative journalism? Our we are investigating as well. We so are so investigating. The investigation we are talking about, let's not even hold brief as a part of that constituency too. What happened to dip, digging deep to actually find out where did this money go? Who paid what? To who? How? These are the ingredients of the investigation. And we should bring that and present it in the Nigerian public. We should not wait for press releases. We should not wait for people uh, for people to come on air to start uh, cross their legs and uh, answer questions in air conditioned studios. We should take it by the power. By the time we are inviting them to the studio, it should be to answer to questions of the investigation that have been carried out. And so we should pinch ourselves and say whether we are failing at the first state of the realm. Well, you do not believe that Nigeria can become an ex exporter of petroleum products. You do not Why not? That we time. have done it before. I believe very strong. In fact, you have said, do you not believe it's like what we have not done before? I've told you at the beginning of this conversation. You just don't believe Melekiari. Pardon? I said, you, you believe Nigeria can do it, but you just don't believe Melekiari saying it. That no, it what is. I said is that if you say, I believe like that, you look at something that we have not done before. Mm. I told you that in the 70s and 80s and even the early 90s, we are not a spot of petroleum products. So what we have done 40 years ago, 50 years ago, is what we are trying to do after 50 years. Are you asking me whether I believe it? It's just rocket science. Nigeria has been an export over 50 years ago, 40 years ago. So it's what we have been doing. It's just that successive governments in the past 35 years have made sure that we don't export oil. Don't, we are not an exporter of oil. Why they did this is what I don't know. So it's time to even go back to what we were in the 70s and 80s. So it's what we have been doing. It's not a matter of, it's not a new thing. We should go back to it. Hmm. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Ambrose Iboke, for your time. Thank you for having me on the show. Dr. Ambrose Iboke, Chairman, Guild of Public Affairs Analysts of Nigeria, Enugu State Chapter, has been my guest on the first hot topic. We'll be back in a moment with the second hot topic. It is Mental Health Day. How healthy is your mental health? Stay with us. <laughs>